Hi, I'm Bob Costello, Chief Economist at the American Trucking Association, and today I'd like to give you an update on the current driver shortage. First of all, freight volumes have improved in the industry. We've seen a better economy, and that has led to better freight volumes. The problem has been the inability to add capacity, especially in the truckload market. And the reason why the truckload carriers can't add capacity is because they can't find enough drivers. Now, in terms of the driver market, I think that turnover rates are a good reflection of what's going on in the driver market. And last year, we saw annualized turnover in the truckload space at 95%, right? Very high, has remained elevated at over 95% for the last three years. And even LTL, while it's much lower at 12%, has been an increase from the previous years. Now the shortage today is somewhere in the neighborhood of 35,000 to 40,000 drivers. And the problem here is that there are many causes of the truck driver shortage, right? We've got demographics issues. That includes age. The average age of a truck driver today is 49 years old versus 42 years old for all U.S. workers. We have a gender issue. All U.S. workers, women make up 47% of all U.S. workers but only 6% of truck drivers. It's a lifestyle issue. Often it's a job of last resort. We have more job alternatives out there. This year, the uh, construction market's gonna build 1.2 million new homes. When you're building that many homes, you gotta add more workers, so there's more alternatives out there. Of course, regulations play into this, right? It reduces productivity and therefore you know, in increases the driver shortage. And lastly, it's not easy to get a dr commercial driver's license. Many truckload fleets will pay the driver after they get the uh, CDL $150 to $200 a month until they recoup the cost of getting the CDL, but they still have to come up with it in, in advance, the money in advance for that. So there's many reasons. Now, what are the effects of the truck driver shortage? Well, it's difficult to add capacity, right? Last year, we saw the truckload fleet uh, actually reduce capacity by 3%. I've yet to talk to a truckload carrier that wanted to reduce capacity, but it's sort of a right sizing to the amount of drivers that they can keep. It uh, increases uh, operational hardships, right? It increases costs, freight delays, and so what we'll see, we're seeing is many fleets are replacing tractors. They're not adding to capacity, but they're replacing tractors as a way to attract drivers, especially uh, smaller fleets that have a higher average age. They're finally to the point where they can start replacing drivers. They've seen the spot market go up. They're saving some money on fuel, and they're, and they're replacing their tractors. Now, what are the solutions or the market reactions to this driver shortage? Well, one is pay is going up. In the neighborhood of 8 to 15% we saw last year, really starting in the May-June time period. And believe me, I expect similar increases this year. Carriers are starting to add sign-on bonuses. And you know, everyone needs to treat drivers better, right? Another possible solution, could we lower the interstate driving age? You know, in many states, it's, if you just drive within that state, it's 18 years old to drive in the state. But as soon as you cross the state boundary, you got to be 21 years old. That means we lose folks going to the military, getting other careers. Does it need to be 21 years old? And this is something that maybe we can look at in the future. We need to fix congestion. Drivers are sick and tired of s sitting in traffic, and I don't blame them. Right? So uh, this is another thing. If we could get a fuels tax increase and get some money into get fixing these freight bottlenecks, that would help. I often get asked the question, are these oil field workers that are getting laid off because oil prices are so low and, and production is sort of, we're not doing a lot of new production, are, are these oil field workers going to start to come and fill the gap of drivers? And I just don't believe so. If you go to the oil fields and what you see is, um, drivers out there are really paid not to drive, right? They do a lot of sitting around, and they're, by the way, they're getting paid eighty, ninety, a hundred thousand dollars a year. And I just don't see those folks transitioning over to the over-the-road truckload environment where they're making fifty thousand dollars a year and driving more. And of course, what about returning military? And that is a great option. It's our hiring our heroes is a great program. And we need to transition those folks more into a driving job, although I don't know that we'll, f we'll completely solve the driver shortage through that as well. Now, what about the future? First of all, I think the driver shortage gets worse before it gets better, right? And even though we're seeing these 
big pay increases, we're still having a hard time attracting enough people into the industry. Now, if we look out a little further out, we've got in late 2017, we're gonna have the implementation of electronic logging devices. You know, that probably adds to the driver shortage. And in the near term, I think pay increases uh, continue at a very good clip. And in the near term, I think these large pay increases continue. It's really the market-based solution. I, you know, I think it's more than just pay. You have a lot of issues going on, but it's just natural for pay to go up, sign on bonuses and so forth, when you have a shortage of any labor, whether it's drivers or, or, or other. So, you know, again, the good news here is the economy's doing better, freight volumes are doing better, uh, but I guess the downside to it is we're going to have to continue to struggle with the driver shortage. And, uh, and because there's no one reason for the driver shortage, there's a lot of solutions. There's a lot of things that have to go on. This is, by the way, a total supply chain issues. You know, we all need to treat drivers better. That includes shippers. That includes receivers. So hang in there. You're going to continue to have some issues with drivers for the foreseeable future. The, I guess the good side of that is that means the economy is doing well.